see if we can navigate out of here. So uh, there's a funeral pyre. Um, the guy kneeling down, you can't see him now because he's behind a stack of ash. He's the sun. Every human being has four goals. Mm. And they are called four Purshan. The first goal is Dharma. When a child is born, he must educate himself. Mm. He must try to educate himself. He must be aware of his religious duties and so on. In simple way, you can say, when a child is born, he must go to school. Hmm. Okay. Learn. You know? Right. So Dharma just means Learn. go to school. You go to school, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Because I've heard and Dharma then, before, but yeah. I didn't know what it was. Dharma. Go to so, school. And when the child has received his formal education, when he's grown up, he must try to achieve his second goal. Hmm. The second goal is called Artha, money. Money is also very important. Hmm. You know? He must work hard and make money. Got it. And when he started making money, hmm. he must try to he must try to have his third goal, which is called Kama, physical pleasure. He must get married. Get married. Yeah, raise, uh, give birth, raise the children and so on. Uh -huh. And when he's old and retired, he must try to achieve his final goal. And our final goal is Moksha. Moksha is salvation, you know, uh -huh. liberation from the cycle of birth and death. Uh, okay. We believe in Moksha. Mm. We believe in life after birth. Mm. So life after death. We believe in rebirth. But rebirth is suffering. Life is suffering and rebirth yeah, is punishment. Yeah, rebirth is suffering and rebirth punishment. Rebirth is punishment. Right. So every Hindu wants to break the cycle of birth and death. Okay. Which is called moksha. Mm. Is moksha birth and death or is moksha breaking the cycle of... Breaking the cycle of birth and death. Okay, so moksha is actually breaking the cycle of birth yeah. and death. Yes. Which is just more suffering. suffering. More and more suffering. Which is ultimate, you know, when you achieve moksha, you have ultimate peace. All our life, we try to make ourselves happy, but we are ne never happy. Nothing can make you happy. Right. You need to Even release. if you become a richest man in the world, you, you may enjoy it for a couple of months. Right, but then, there's yeah, then more you, desire, more and, and, desire. Yes, and you need you to, right you need to yes. re release yourself from that desire. Yes, right. Is there a, when, when you, achieve moksha and you get out of the birth and death cycle yes, yes. do you cease to exist you is become, it like the buddhist nirvana yeah, that goes you, on you or is it something part else of the universal soul okay we believe that mm. we every every creature is part of the universal soul okay like part of the big flame mm -hmm. you're a small flame from mm. the big flame mm. and when you achieve moksha your your flame uh, what do you say Go to go back to the big flame. Oh, you return to the big flame, the universal. Yeah, universal what do you say? Yeah, soul. Universal soul. Yeah. It it sounds similar to the Buddhist nirvana. The Buddhism is, you know, one of the you, of Hinduism. You achieve you achieve yeah. the highest state, and then you yes. almost cease to yes. exist. You kind of just go off, Buddhism and you're is not reborn. Version of Hinduism. Ah, that's a good way to say it. Yeah. Mm. I find it interesting that in the sixth century BC. Yeah. Siddhartha Gwantama, the Buddha was there. Con Confucianism yeah. and Jainism yeah. and Zoroaster. And most people don't remember or think about Zoroastrianism because it's not a big thing anymore, but a long time ago it was. So all four of those were the 6th century BC. Conv because the religions before, you know, 6th century BC had become very, very complicated yes. and so on. Mm. So people wanted, people were fed up of those, you know, old religions. Coincidence or planned? Hmm. So there's a priest under each of those umbrellas. And then on the, the blue towers, who, what gods are those? It looks like Shiva on the left and then Brahma on the right. Is that right? Because Brahma, 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 I see three heads. Is there four heads? Yeah. And then in Shiva, I see the, the bull. Uh, yes, I see the snake. I'm looking for the trident, but maybe that's on the other side. Brahma, the creator, Shiva, the destroyer, but only of bad things. Mm. But like other religion, we also have one god. Mm. And the supreme god is called Param Brahma. Oh, he's above. 
Brahma, Vishnu, yeah. Shiva? Yeah, he's, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Param Brahma. Param Brahma. Yeah. And all Param the other Brahma. million gods and goddesses are the reincarnations of Param Brahma. Oh. Okay. The three main incarnations, mm. manifestations, mm. Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, and then the thousands. Okay. So these gods are manifestations of Param Brahma. Param, it's hard to say, Param Brahma. Param Brahma. Okay, so the guy in here, the Sudra, the untouchable, the servant class guy, um, he lives here. And then you need the flame. You have to buy the flame from him if you're going to cremate your loved one. And the cremation will typically happen down there at the funeral pyre uh, cremation yeah, gat. Okay, yeah, so there's one. Yes, so there's one down there and one down there. And then the eternal flame, the one that's been going for 4,000 years, is over in the pink tower. Pinkish tower, whatever that color that is. And you have to pay him to go get the flame, and then you go start the flame for your cremation. You can see all the wood stacked up. This is for the cremation. Tons of wood. Tons of wood. Stacked up. Dippers in the water. So they're doing ancestral rituals over here. There's some village women. And then there's the, the temple that's all lopsided. And then there's the Ganges, the Ganga down there. What are they carrying? Is it? What are they carrying in the bags? Clothes, towel, food. Oh, okay. Just their normal packs. Okay. Oh. And here's all the wood. Right. Let's take a photo of the all the wood stacked up.